Hello, good morning. I'm Dr. T, and uh, my presentation today is about the importance of the muscle tissue as a metabolic regulator. So the contractor or skeletal or even striated muscle that refers to the same thing is not just useful for locomotor purposes. On the contrary, it's a metabolic regulator with important functions being valuable for longevity. According to Mauro Di Pasquale, we carry our own fat, but our muscles carry us. This phrase implies the importance of the muscle tissue versus the fat. Now, the multiple role of the skeletal muscle, apart from the thermogenesis and stimulation of the basal metabolic rate, the skeletal muscle have abilities of critical importance. Striated muscles support bones and skeleton, improve the posture, and contribute to proper breathing. Intercostal muscles, sternal clidomastoid, serratus anterior, and levator scapulae are respiratory muscles, along with the main muscle of respiration, which is the diaphragm, a dome-shaped muscle that separates the abdominal from the thoracic cavity. Now, the contractile muscle affect the protein metabolism because the muscles consist of protein and amino acids, and actually the muscle, the skeletal muscle, is a major pool of amino acids, a reservoir. So the role of protein is fundamental in order to support the building blocks uh, that participate in the synthesis of immunoglobulins A, D, E, G, and M. So we know that immunoglobulins are proteins, therefore muscles that are breaking down to the, the made of proteins are very important for the immunity. Skeletal muscles are able to synthesize to, to store 90% of the glycogen stored, which is the main fuel stores in the body, and a small percent deals with the liver. Now, the amino acid pool is responsible for the positive or, nitrogen, or negative nitrogen balance. These amino acids are broken down in cases of stress, such as starvation and malnutrition. Now, starvation is a form of physical and mental stress, and it kicks cortisol, the stress hormone, and the gluconeogenesis occurs. Now, the gluconeogenesis is a complex procedure that takes place in the hepatic parenchyme. The skeletal muscle is broken down to provide glucose as an acute energy source for the brain and for the muscle itself. During trauma also, or burns, amino acids serve as an indirect energy source through gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis equals muscle breakdown and catabolism, actually that lowers DMR, this is catastrophic. This obviously equals to, to slower recovery and recuperation. Eventually, there is a poor quality of living leading to wasting syndrome or cachexia. The lower the muscles, the higher the insulin resistance, and this reflects on the hemoglobin A1C. This occurs because muscle tissue is the number one metabolic regulator and it bursts glucose and fights glycemia. So the less muscle that we have, the more likely to develop insulin resistance and prediabetes. Now, during the anthropocene and the Middle Age crisis, this is the aging process that can actually lead to sarcopenia. The striated muscles are characterized by severe atrophy, minimizing its size. Anthropos is a result of hormonal decline and reflects of how contractile muscles work. Cachexia leads to elevated adipose tissue, which in turn elevates estrogens and beta estradiol in particular. Elevated estradiol increases also SHBG, the sex hormone binding globulin that is antagonistic to the bioavailable of free testosterone, the one that works. Therefore, we conclude, it's very simplified, but it's true, that the less muscle we have and the more fat we develop, the less the free testosterone, the sex drive. Now, the hormonal replacement therapy, both men and women, replaces the hormones. And in order to preserve the skeletal muscle and avoid wasting, HRT is necessary. Androgens in men, Testosterone replacement therapy ensures there is no catabolic effect of cortisol because glucocorticoids and cortisol in particular is antagonistic to the androgens. So the lower the androgens in the testosterone, the higher the cortisol, which is catabolic. And after the age of 40, equal, uh, usually androgens decline and andropause equals the middle age crisis in men. It has been estimated that in middle aged men, the SHBG elevates, and this is mainly due to the lack of muscle mass that kicks on elevated adipose tissue visceral fat that also lowers the free testosterone. The low sex drive, these are the uh, symptoms of the andropause. We have the low sex drive, low libido, plus the erectile dysfunction, which that means the poor blood flow to the penis. Testicular sphingus as well because of the low testosterone. 
and this is a classic symptom of the primary hypogonadism with testicular failure with elevated LH but low total and free testosterone. The elevated LH reflects on the compensation of the brain to the lower testosterone and the shrinking of the testicles. We have, of course, as a result, lower muscle mass, strength, endurance, stamina. Lower muscle and lower BMI equals lower BMR. Increase of the visceral fat that leads perhaps to gynecomastia also because gyno is estrogen related as well. Lower sex esteem and depression because of the lower DHT, but also because there is lack of optimization of neurotransmitters like serotonin, the joy hormone, and dopamine, which is, deals with the feeling of reward. Cognitive function is also linked with that. And another two things is the osteoporosis, osteopenia, that leads to bone fractures because lack of androgens. We have a lower bone measurement density. And the lower the androgens, the lower the APO, that reflects to the erythrocytosis, erythropoiesis, the synthesis of red blood cells, that lead to oxygenation of the skeletal muscle and the tissue in general. So we have lack of stamina and endurance and fatigue. Now men start to observe a significant loss in lean body mass and feeling weaker as muscles shrink and the basal metabolic rate drops. This eventually costs in more visceral fat, which increases estrogens. And estrogens is a negative feedback in the brain for synthesis of GnRH and LH that as a result increase testosterone. The less muscle will lead to insulin resistance since muscles are the number one metabolic regulator of the body that burns glucose. Insulin resistance will lead to type 2 diabetes, non-insulin dependent. That also is linked to metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease. So we, un we, we understand that lower testosterone may lead to metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease. The efficiency of the visceral fat oxidation becomes sluggish with as testosterone levels drop. Now, uh, testosterone synthesis must be by increasing positive nitrogen balance through assimilation of the animal protein. As we take testosterone, we, may, well, we are able to create a positive nitrogen balance through the assimilation of amino acids. Also stimulates aldosterone from the kidneys. It's a hormone that retains sodium and water as a result. That is able to uh, lubricate the synovial cavity and smooth the pain in the joints. In this way, sarcoplasm is volumized and muscles appear fuller and this particular equals greater anabolism. After all, we know that muscles consume 70% of water. Nevertheless, it's also an anti-catabolic agent. Uh, is the main hormone in the replacement therapy of the man. Here